All right. AP stat exam scores, day one. So what the students do on the AP stats exam last year, specifically we want to estimate P, which is the true proportion of all AP students in the district that pass the AP exam, and mu, which is the true mean of the AP exam score for all stat students in this district. Notice how it says specifically in this district. Okay, that's something to be paying attention to. Because these are called parameters. We talked about that in like unit one just briefly. And that means that it's coming from a population. Okay. So parameters are coming from a population. So mu and p are the true proportion and true mean. Okay. Here's the dot plot. And it shows the AP stats exam scores for all 253 students in a large district. What does each dot represent? Okay, so okay, so the AP stats exam score for one of the students in this district. This is important. You have to be specific about the population that you're talking about. You can't just say like generality, okay? Again, this is the population. So there's a population of 253 students in this large district. We're going to take a random sample of the 10 students and we're going to list out their AP scores. Okay. So the 10 students are called what? A sample. Okay. So we go and do from the population, we take a sample. Okay. And I'm going to give you those scores really quick. Let's do one, five, five, four, three, four, two, three, one. Go ahead and write those down. Now we're going to take another random sample. Okay. And um, that's going to be one, four, one, four, five, one. Five, four, two, four. Yeah. All right, and then let's take another sample. Yay. And that's going to be one, five, three, two, five, five, two, five, four, four. Okay, what is considered passing on the AP exam? Three, four, five. So looking at our first group, our first sample that we pulled, what was the proportion that passed? So out of the 10 students, how many of them passed from that group? Seven? Remember, three and above. Okay. All right, so I'm going to scroll a little bit. All right, so what proportion passed? That's going to be 0.7. So we're going to call this 0.7 is equal to P. Look at this. New little symbol. Hat. Looks like a little party. P hat. All right. What proportion passed on the second group? 0.6. So we're going to say 0.6 is 
is equal to P hat. And what proportion passed on the last group? 0.7. Bless. Ooh. Right, so now we got to find the mean. Yay. So we're going to add them all up and divide by 10. Okay, so go ahead and do that for the first sample, second sample, and the third sample. Take a second. Try that. All right, so for the first sample, what'd you get? 3.3. And we're going to say that's X bar. On the second one, you should have gotten 3.1. And the third one, you should have gotten 3.6. Okay, so notice how these are from the sample. So we call those statistics. Okay, parameters, population. Statistics, sample. PPSS. Yeah. Notice how our notation is different. Little party hat and X bar is from a sample. And then P and mu is coming from the population. Okay, so, so far we've really kind of been talking about what? Every time we've been using mu, right? We've been talking about population so far. Okay, so we're going to add our sample proportions to the class dot plot and sketch it here. So if we all picked different ones, okay, this is kind of the distribution that we would get. Go ahead and put this on your dot plot. So we would have one at 0.3. We would have three at 0.4. We would have five at 0.5. So I don't trust y'all with data anymore. After the whole like John versus Jennifer thing, y'all kind of like ruin that. But theoretically, you should have these proportions. Like if you took a sample over and over again of all of those up at the top, roughly this is what you could get. It might look a little different depending on each class. Okay, so we would get eight here. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine at point seven, four at point eight, and one at point nine. So this is if I ask you, hey, can you pull a sample and then find the proportions that pass? So what does one dot represent? Hey friend. What does one dot from this represent? Adjust it. Say again. Okay. So one random sample of 10 students and a proportion calculated from that sample. So if I said, hey, Mo, pick 10 people in here in this distribution randomly, then calculate how many of them passed. He would give me a number. That would be one of these dots. So this is the sampling distribution of P hat. So some words I want you to pay attention to is sampling proportions. And on the next one, it says sample mean. Okay. All right, so again, I'm going to give you the dots for this next one. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So I'm going to draw it for you. So there's one around 2.2. There's one right above 2.4. One in between 2.4 and 2.6. There's three right above 2.6. Two here. Two here. And it's okay. We just kind of want the shape. So don't freak out about being exact. Five, four, six, three, one. And this is a sampling distribution of X bar. So this is if I was just asked Mo, I said, hey, you found your proportion. We put it on the last dot plot. Now I want you to find the mean of your sample. So what does each dot represent? Okay, one random sample of 10 students and a mean calculated from that sample. Okay, so oftentimes we have a hard time with determining whether it is a population or it is a sample. Okay, we're gonna get some practice with that in just a second. But first, let's kind of recap what we have learned. Okay, so the learning target number one, a statistic is used to estimate a parameter. A statistic is used to estimate a parameter. Okay. So from statistic to parameter, we learned about p hat versus p. We learned about x bar versus mu. And there's also standard deviation, which is an s versus the sigma. Everything on the right side, we've talked about. Probability. Probability. So we call them proportions. Yep. Standard deviation. Yep. Standard deviation is for statistics. It's talking about for your sample. The other thing that we've talked about is the sampling distributions. That was all the fancy dot plots that we did. So the distribution of values for a statistic for all possible samples of a given size from a given population. Okay, so that's talking about Taking a sample of 10 out of the 253 multiple times and then putting it on a dot plot.
Okay. So in that check your understanding, it's asking for population sample, the parameter, the statistic. Okay. Go ahead and take a moment. Go ahead and answer those questions. See how far you can get. Don't just sit there. This takes a little bit of practice. Okay. So take a couple minutes. Try these. We're going to go overall. So for each scenario, you're identifying the population, the parameter, the sample, and the statistic. Make sure that you use correct notation for parameter and statistics. So the Gallup organization, which by the way, um, they do a lot of stuff. Like when you go to college, they do a lot of research. So lots of surveys come from them. Recently interviewed a random sample of 1,013 adults in the United States and asked them how much annual income their families need to get by. The average amount for the sample was 85,000. So what is the population? Say it again. The adults in the United States. So all adults in the US. Okay, now what is the sample? Okay, 1,013 adults in the U.S. Okay. All right, now parameter. Actually, let's do statistic. Because it tells us that our sample was 85,000, right? So we're going to say X bar is 85,000. Okay. For parameter, we're going to say mu, and that's going to be the true mean income. Okay. Mo asked if, like, there was a number for that. Do we know all of the data? No. We're looking at a little bit of the data so that we can talk about it in perspective to the population. Okay. All right, the Gallup organization recently interviewed a random sample of 1,013 adults in the United States, asked them how much their annual income was. The standard deviation amount from the sample was 15,300. So again, what's the population? All adults in the US. And then the sample was gonna be that 1,013 adults in the US. Okay, what's this 15,300? Is it sample or is it population? Yeah. Sample. Okay, so for sample, we're going to say S is equal to 15,300. For parameter, we've been using sigma. Allie. <laughs> and that means that it's going to be the true standard deviation of income. You need to like state what you're talking about. Like it's always in terms of like whatever the units are. Okay, see if you can do the next one. I see a lot of people writing. I think you can do the next one. All right, so some curious AP stat students believe that most cars in the school parking lot are silver. Is that a true statement? No. Really? Hmm. I thought it was white. I'm not sure. Okay. Oh, your car is much. All right, well, they take a random sample of 30 cars and calculate the proportion of the sample that are silver to be 0.36. So what is the population? Okay, all cars in parking lot. Okay, what's the sample? 30 cars, okay. What is the statistic? Because this is for the sample, right? So we're gonna say, P hat is equal to 0.36. All right, for parameter, that's going to be P is equal to the true proportion of silver cars. Okay, 
students want to estimate the average word length of Beyonce's, Beyonce, mm, let me try that again. <clears throat> Beyonce's song, Crazy in Love. Each student took a random sample of five words and calculated the mean of the sample and then used all the sample means to create a dot plot. Does this dot plot represent a population distribution or part of a sampling distribution? Explain. So what are these dots representing? Okay, so this is showing a random sample of five words. So this is called a sampling distribution. This is not a population distribution. This is not all every like possible outcome, right? So sampling distribution because each dot represents a stat or a statistic from a different random sample. Okay, so you should have copied down your dot plots from the previous page. <laughs> Remember, this is your sampling distribution of P hat. No. And then sampling distribution of X bar. Okay, you've got to be careful and pay attention to the notation. Okay. All right. The true population, I'm sorry, true, mm, true proportion of all AP stat students in the district that pass the AP exam is 0. 0.652. So on your little dot plot right in here, you're going to put a line and you're going to say P is equal to 0. 0.652. Okay, the true mean for all AP stat students in this district is 3.11. So you're going to come in here, you're going to draw a line, and you're going to say mu equals 3.11. Did we overestimate or underestimate or neither? the true proportion and the true mean. What do you think? What do you mean? Why do you say that? Yeah. So we've got about half too high. Um, so we're going to say neither. About half are too high and half are too low. The mean of the sampling distribution is about equal to the parameter. So just like what she was saying, if we actually found that mean, about the same. Okay. What happens if we increase the sample size? So if we took 20 instead of 10. Okay. So let's say that three different people in this classroom did a sample, okay, and this was our result, okay? Ugh. Five, three, one, two, four, three, four, one, three, three, four, three, five, two, five, I'm running out of room, two, three, five, five, three. I'll read it again. Five, three, one, Two, four, three, four, one, three, three, four, three, five, two, five, and two, three, five, five, three. 
All right, for sample two and three, what I want you to do is I want you to take a sample, okay? On the previous page in your packet, is that up for the fog? Okay. Um, so what I want you to do is on the previous page, there's like a list of all the AP stat results. I want you to take a sample, random sample of 20. Okay, so on this page. Okay, notice how there are one to 253 students. You can do a random number generator. You cannot repeat numbers though. Okay, it has to be different numbers. So on your laptop or on your phone, you can do random number generator, go from one to 253. And I want you to pull two samples of 20. Pull two samples of 20 and you're gonna put your numbers right there in those two lines. Okay, take a moment, try that. Start pulling. So now do you see why I did the sampling distribution for you? It takes a while, okay? So if you did that over and over, like in each one of us did it, okay? And then we all put it on the board. This is roughly what it would look like. Again, you should find your proportion that passed. That's anybody who's three and above. You should find the mean of your proportion. Again, those are going to be different from what I'm about to put up here for sample two and three. But if you didn't do it, this would give you 0.7 for this one and 0.65 for the second or the third one. Over here, we would have 3.40 and 3.05. Notice how these numbers are kind of closer together, okay? Now, we're gonna add our sample proportions and sample means to make a new class dot plot. Um, respectfully, some of you didn't do this, so our dot plot wouldn't really work. So, I'm gonna give you the dot plot that I have. So, 0.5, you're gonna have one. In between, you're gonna have five. Yep. The means. So you're going to take up all your numbers, add them all up, and then divide by 20. Right? Is that what you mean? Oh, um, X bar for the first one was 3.3, second one was 3.4, and the third one was 3.05. Mm -hmm. What's that? No, 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 no. That's mean is the average. So, so everything added up, that's that average to 0.165. That's what I think. Mean. Did you divide by 20? Let me take a look at yours in just a second. Okay, copy down this proportion really quick. I'm sorry, this sampling distribution. So on point six, you got seven. In between, you've got nine. Seven, eight, nine. On seven, you got four, three, four. On the next one, you got two, one at point eight, and then one in between. Over here, you've got two here, one here, two here. I'm just going to copy it down and then give you a second. Okay, again, doesn't have to be super perfect. We've got the sampling distribution of P hat and sampling distribution of X bar, right? Okay, so how do the dot plots from the sample size of 20 compare to the size of 10? Looking back at your dot plot from the um, up at the top, because you have it up there. 
Look at your means. How are those compared? So at the top of your page, on the right-hand side, <clears throat> compare that one to the one you just did, the one that's on the board. How are they similar? How are they different? <laughs> Okay. Let's talk about variability. What is variability? It's how spread out they are, right? So from the first one to the one we just wrote down, is it more spread out or less spread out? Less spread out. So there's less... Mo, you're going to make me fight you. Okay. So less variability. We have increased our sample size. We have decreased our variability. Okay. So we've increased our sample size. We've decreased our variability. Because think about it. The more, pe more people that I'm using from that population, the closer it is going to be to the true mean or true proportion, right? Okay, so go ahead and flip the page. Here are some vocab that I need you to know. No, you're carrying on a whole conversation. Like, I'm getting that, like, recorded. Like, we in the studio. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, biased versus unbiased estimator. Okay, so bias is going to be consistently overestimate or underestimates, consistently overestimates or underestimates the true population parameter. What's the parameter? It's talking about the population, right? It's like what condition on the Okay. All right, unbiased. Is where the mean of the sampling distribution is equal to population parameter. So looking back on question number three, did the class mostly overestimate or underestimate? What did we say? We said neither, right? Okay, so did we, are we biased or unbiased estimator? Unbiased, okay? All right, another thing that we talked about is the full size. Okay, we increase the sample size. So as we increase the sample size, increase the sample size, variability of sampling distribution decreases. So as we increase our N, the variability is decreasing. A good statistic is going to have low bias and low variability. Okay, you've heard the term accurate versus precise, right? Yes. Like when somebody's shooting a bow and area, bow, mm. bow and arrow, if they are precise, what does that mean? Is it on the target? 
Mm. Okay. What would accurate mean? Okay, so here's a bullseye. That's okay. All right. I shoot and I hit over here. Am I accurate? No. Okay. If I hit the blue target, if I hit right here, am I accurate? Yes. If I hit right here, and then right here, and right here, and right here, am I hitting the same spot every single time? No, so I'm not precise. Does that make sense? So precision is you're getting that cluster kind of together. Accurate means you're hitting a specific target. Does that make sense? Okay, accurate is I'm hitting the target. Precision means I'm getting multiple in the same place. You can be precise, but not accurate. I can hit the ground every single time. Okay, but that doesn't make me accurate. That makes me precise. Okay. Huh? Okay. What, what? But like, bro. Like, what if your entire goal was it? I mean, that's your goal. Standards are low. I don't know. Um, it's the fact that I've seen somebody try to shoot a bow and arrow and they shot like the bow part. They didn't shoot the arrow. <laughs> they just kind of held on to it. I was like, how did that happen? That's crazy. All right. Go ahead and take a look at the check your understanding. Okay. Go ahead and work through one through E. I'm sorry, A through E. Yeah. Numbers and letters. Hard. Okay. Uh, I guess. All right. So complete the table by listing 10 possible samples of size n equals 2 from this population. So how big how big is our sample? No, 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 no. Pause. How big is our sample? Two. Two. How many times are we going to do it? Ten. Okay. So if we have JA, let's do J, and then the next child would be M. And then let's do J E and then J S. Okay. Then we're gonna choose the least. And we'll do A M A E A S. And then let's choose Michael. M E M S E S. These are all the possible outcomes, right? Yes. All right, now for your mean or your X bar, you are going to add those two ages together and then divide by two. Everybody see how we did that? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and give you those numbers. 11, 12, 13, 11, 12, 13, 15, 16, and 17. Okay, then we're going to create a sampling distribution of the sample mean. So we're going to take all of these and make a little dot plot. So we got one at eight. We've got two at 11. Oops, that's not on 11. Two on 11. Two on 12. Two on 13. One on 15. One on 16. One on 17. And we are a sampling distribution of x bar make sure that you label your dot plot again you assume that the reader has no idea what they're doing right i don't know why they would be grading your thing but that's okay okay so then you want to find the mean of the sampling distribution of the sample mean i need you to read that again what is the mean of the sampling distribution of the sample mean? So what are we doing there? Is what is it, what are the so what, what is, is the mean, mean of the mean? Of, yes. Mean, mean. mean of the means. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Look at the new notation. Mu sub x bar. So 
we got 8 plus 11 plus 12 plus 13 all the way to 17. And we're going to divide by 10. And that's going to give us 12.8. Then what is the mean of the population? The population is how many people? The population is how many people? Five. Okay, so we're going to say mu equals 8 plus 8 plus 14 plus 16 plus 18. We divide it by 5, and that gives us 12.8. <gasps> Look at the numbers. Wild. Wait, hold on, what? Okay, so the question asked us to find the mean of the sample mean. Then it also said, what's the mean of the population? Our population is those five kids at the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, notice the notation. Mu sub x bar versus mu. You say mu. Then you're talking about the population. Okay. Is the sample mean an unbiased estimator of the population mean? Why? Because they... Okay. But if you took a sample over and over and over again, it's going to give you closer to the true mean of the population. The more samples that you take, the closer to the mean you're gonna be. If you just take one sample, it's not a true indication of the entire population, right? That makes sense? What I'm asking okay. is, is it okay if what I have in my paper does not equal both of them? But when I, when I mean by stuff, I just it's close, but yours is a little bit of an overestimate. Where'd you, how'd you get 13.1? Yeah, I had no repeats. Mm -mm. That might be where you came from. All right, so yes, the mean of uh, the sampling distribution, x bar is 12.8, is the same as the mean of the population, which is 12.8. Suppose we had taken a sample size of three instead of two, would the variability of the sampling distribution of the sample mean be larger, smaller, or about the same? Smaller. Okay. 